Greetings, ladies and mental gents, and welcome to this bonus Tales from Outer Space. I decided to post this as a thank you for a $10 tip that I received last night. There will still be the normal Tales from Space that we released later today. And, as always, I hope that you enjoy. And thank you again for the tip. Any and all support for the channel, whether it be monetary or otherwise, is very much appreciated. Enjoy. Story number one, The Ethics Officer, written by Darius. Log one, The Ethics Officer, Mac Barker, reporting to the Yovan Freighter, Eater of Worlds. Frictus, I look, I know this isn't my first assignment, and I know that these logs are transmitted back to the Academy and made part of the public record. Well, let me make this clear. Frick, this fricking frick ship. This morning, I was dropped off by a shuttle of the Eater of Worlds, after a perfunctory introduction to Yeoman Captain. I suppose that's to be expected from the giant snake aliens. I was escorted to the human habitation module, the same module that my predecessor had occupied, still occupied actually. Her bloated, pestering corpse was drifting, unsecured, having been further battered by every high G maneuver this rux bucket had performed in the last few weeks. It wasn't pretty... Yeah, and I'm sure the murderer and previous captain had been detained and digitized, but couldn't the crew at least clean up after his mess? I get it, I'm the new guy here and I lack experience, but seriously, this speeding is less like a rookie job and more like a death sentence. I mean, what kind of name is a simple fater? Eater of worlds. Log 2 of the ethics officer Matt Barker, reporting from the Yovan Freighter, Eater of Worlds. I learned a few valuable things today. Number one, the Yovan haven't invented cleaning razors or sponges or even fricking towels. They just ingest whatever mess they come across. Gross. I don't know if it's lucky or unlucky that it is against protocol to ingest human remains. I have no idea how to clean up this mess. Number two, the Yovans never developed a sense of smell. This also explains quite a few mysteries of this fricking ship. Number three, don't use the Yovans' water supply. For any reason, ever. Log 3 of Ethics Officer Matt Barker reporting from the Yovan Freighter Eater of Worlds. I believe today's relevant conversation went something like this. No, Captain, we can't eat the passengers. Yes, Captain, they will notice if a few of the smaller ones go missing. No, Captain, even though they're in cryosleep, they still retain the rights and sentient beings. No, Captain, even if you offer me some, I won't change my mind. Log 4 of the Ethics Officer Matt Barker, reporting from the Yovan Freighter Reader of Worlds. Jesus Christ, the Academy wasn't kidding. These sods really don't have a clue. Turns out that my captain was freshly hatched. Clearly the Yovan's neural indoctrination has fricked up somewhere as he seemed to only have the vaguest notion of why I was here. I told him the short version. Let me know if I got it right. Before humanity entered the galactic stage, the space-faring alien community was a colossal cosmic cluster fluck and myriad of alien creatures were constantly and violently bumping into each other like superheated gas. Much like superheated gas, there were endless explosions, some literal and some on the more societal and uh, genocidal scale. Turns out that while as a whole alien life is talented and good at many things, warfare, tech and opera, the myriads of desperate worldviews are nigh impossible to reconcile. Basic empathy was one of the more rare elements in the galaxy. Wouldn't you know it, empathy was humanity's only valuable commodity. After we broke a few dozen peace treaties and trade agreements, most aliens realized that it was more profitable to not blow each other up. Most of the time, before long it became an interstellar law to have a human aboard every ship in the cosmos to facilitate the new Pax Galactica. Humans would be safely harbored and well paid by their hosts, and in turn the humans would prevent intergalactic boedlam. The Academy had created a train us ethics officers as best they could, and here I am. Here I am to tell the Captain Frickwood to stop frying the atmosphere in the uninhabited worlds, and I quote, Because I like purple fires. It's like babysitting a psychopathic three-year-old. Psychopathic three-year-olds that are also giant snake people. Psychopathic three-year-old giant snake people that are in command of hyper-advanced quantum technology. God damn it. Log 5 of Ethics Officer Matt Barker reporting from Yovan Freighter, Eater of Worlds. I regret to inform you that my idiot captain destroyed a Clarpaxian colony in Yinta 7. 
I was taking a very essential nap after having presided over the entire mining operation. You would have to actually go with these Yovans when they sat down on a planet's side and constantly remind them not to do the damnedest things. Three times I had to remind them the miners not to use atomic excavators as this planet was already inhabited and most races didn't appreciate lethal levels of fallout in their morning coffee. So, of course, when I wake up the next day, the planet is over departure logs. What do I find? As soon as the Eater of Worlds was safely in orbit, we launched a volley of torpedoes at the mining site. The resulting explosion was sufficient to crack the surface crust and cause a 300-meter tidal wave that had happened to scour the Klopaxian colony from its surface. Pretty sure they all died. Can't say for certain because we didn't stick around. When I asked the captain why he did it, he simply responded, and I quote, we didn't want anyone else to mine there. It would lower the value of our cargo. When I asked why he had waited to launch the torpedoes, he simply hissed, because you were asleep. Log 6, Ethics Officer Matt Barker reporting from the Yovan Freighter, Eater of Worlds. Please disseminate this message to all vessels that plan to visit Venteris too. Don't. Just don't go there. Not worth it anymore. Trust me. Log 7, Ethics Officer Matt Parker reporting from the Yovan Freighter, Eater of Worlds. Addendum to Log 6, don't go to Ventaurus 3 either. Log 8, of Ethics Officer Matt Parker reporting from Yovan Freighter, Eater of Worlds. Look, I understand that some races are skittish about allowing the Ethics Officers to be armed, but this morning would have been a hell of a lot easier if I had had a gun. We were docking at some backwater spaceport when we happened upon a cold assault frigate. Now, I would have known that if I was a cold vessel right away, if their ethics officer wasn't getting drunk at the local dive bar. But as it was, I just didn't recognize the design. So, as we approached the dock at high speed, I definitely wasn't thinking of the first cold massacre, or the second cold massacre, or the infamous tennis incident of the cold prime. If I had, I'd be able to anticipate it when the captain let out a hideous shriek and ordered the Eater of Worlds to ram the cold vessel. Of course, as soon as my translators kicked in, I tried to reason with him, but the damn snake wouldn't listen. I finally got the bastard into a headlock and tried to countermanding his order, but the crew seemed to be as much in a frenzy as the captain. Before I could kill the main engines and reactivate the automatic collision avoidance thrusters, I had to be physically reached into the captain's mouth and rip out his tongues until the bastard went limp. Sure, a few decks were smashed and some passengers were vented into space, but as a whole, I think the situation was salvaged nicely. The captain's tongue should regenerate in a few cycles. I just hope he doesn't develop homicidal notions like his predecessor. So yeah, if you could get me a freaking gun so I don't have to rely on my novice wrestling ability, that would be swell. Log 9, Ethics Officer Matt Barker reporting from the Yovan Freighter, Eater of Worlds. Few things, number one. Thanks for the gun. Number two, I shot the captain in the face today. Don't worry, he totally deserved it. Log 10 of Ethics Officer Matt Barker reporting from Yovan Freighter, Eater of Worlds. So, whoever reads this, please, please send a rescue vessel to pick me up. Coordinates attached. I'm the human in the rescue pod drifting very slowly towards a large and ominous gas giant. Earlier today, I had enacted a self-destruct on the Eater of Worlds after the crew became all murdery. In fact, apparently every century or so the Yovans observe some archaic religious rite of cleansing wherein they all try freaking eat each other. It's all good fun, though, because it culls the population. Shows which individuals deserve to be cloned for the next reproduction cycle, and all together is exhilarating. That's how the Yovan chief engineer put it anyway, as he was trying to swallow my freaking arm. So just make a note of that for all the ethics officers aboard the Yovan vessels, and make sure engineering fortifies your human habitation modules. That would probably do the trick, as the cleansing rite only lasts a few weeks. But there was no way in hell I was going to wait it out. I suppose altogether that the Eater of Worlds wasn't that bad of a first assignment. Pretty sure the Yovans are just generally an unpleasant lot. I'm rather looking forward to my next assignment. Log 1 of Ethics Officer Matt Barker reporting from the Rakaran Destroyer, a fiction everlasting. God freaking damn it. End of story. Story number 2. Where Everybody Knows Your Name, written by Hail Mad Science. Silence descended across the bar like a heavy cloak. 
What did you say, human? Yes, the Virilian, he large lizard Escadian, as it turned drunkenly from its table and drinking mates. Leaning back against the bar from his stool, the human smiled broadly and in a least threatening manner. I said, he's an absolute crap example of a spy, possibly the worst spy ever. The Ryzen interjected, and how do you figure that? He always succeeds in his mission, he always beats the bin. The human nodded, oh, sure he does, a day late and a dollar short, but how many innocent people die along the way? Usually because he's faffing around, or even worse, because the villains know that he's coming. This time, the Varelian stood up, his nearly ten foot height dominating the bar despite the high ceiling. And that's a problem? The human scoffed, seemingly unconcerned with the Varelian stuttering towards him in a drunken feat. A problem? I imagine a spy so famous and so well known that everyone knows who he is. He introduces himself everywhere he goes. The whole point of a spy is to remain unknown and anonymous. The Virilian laughed, slamming its large clawed hand on the bar top and towering over the human. You think it could be done better? The human nodded. Well, sure. For example, if I were some kind of secret spy chasing down, say, meh, a former warden who performed unspeakable acts on a POW using his care, but vanished before he could be brought to trial after the war, I wouldn't start by announcing my name and intentions the minute I walked into a bar. The Viridian froze, his eyes blinking slowly as he stared down at the human. What? In fact, the human continued, I deliberately make sure that it was far too late for the target or any medical doctor to do anything about it before I told him I slipped Valscolium into his drink almost an hour ago. Before I told him that the sluggishness in his limbs wasn't from the booze that he'd been drinking, but from the motor neurons beginning to decay and his entire nervous system slowly falling apart. The Viralian tried to step backwards, but uh, one of his legs gave way and the monster crashed into a nearby table sending splinters of wood and composite materials flying across the bar. The other patrons hastily scrambled to avoid the alien and the debris. The human leaned forward on his stool and stared down at the lizard, and I'd be damn sure I'd finish the job right the first time. The Rolarian's limbs froze and flailed, claws raking at the floor as it tried to pull itself up from the human. But the jerking, halting motions portrayed the internal damage being waged upon the creature's own biology. Its scales fluttered in fitful waves as the nostrils snapped open and closed repeatedly. Signs of an expert in Verilian physiology would recognize its equivalent to sobbing uncontrollably. Please, the adding croaked, help me. One of the patrons started for the door, and like a flood, the rest scurried out, leaving only the Verilian, the human, and the bartender. But don't worry, Colonel Captain, the human said, his eyes unmoving by the piteous man in front of him. Where you're going, you won't be alone. For the next few minutes, the human watched in silence as the Viridian's body spasmed and flailed about on the floor before becoming still. The human stood up from his stool and tossed a large stack of paper currency onto the table. For both my tab and his, the mess and the tipping us off. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please consider supporting the author from the link down below. Otherwise, if you wish to support this channel, there are numerous ways to do so, like liking, subscribing, and possibly even becoming a patron. Otherwise, the easiest way would be to share. And until the next video, I hope that you all have a good one, and I'll see you then. Cheers.